We're gonna look at three different replays at three different MMRs of people playing Slark. This first one is Hurled 5, then we'll be looking at an Ancient 1 player, and finally an Immortal rank 220. So straight away this Slark has gone Pounce level 1, and he only has three Tangos and a Salve. He's also bought this Mango, and in terms of starting items, you want to be quite adaptive in the current patch based on the lineup that you're in lane. So buying only three tangos is usually not enough and you'll have to fly out more tangos later. And this mango as well is not really that useful. You don't have any spells that you're going to be spamming in lane and you only really benefit from the passive health regen. He's now low health, no regen. He's not flying out any regen in the courier. He has 500 gold and he's just sitting here. At this point, you really want to be in the creep wave last hitting, and this is not where you want to be at all. It really makes you suffer in lane, even though you're getting experience, and you're giving the off laner free farm as well during that time. And if this Bristle was a little bit better of a player, you'll end up seeing here is when Slark is low health. Bristle could easily dive here and just kill this Slark if he was a slightly better player. It's not very like strong laning presence from the off lane, and Slark does get this kill here on Silencer. But pretty soon afterwards now he's going back to the fountain when he's only level 5. Ideally he would want to stay around till he's level 6. Then he doesn't need to keep buying regen anymore because of the passive ability from his ultimate. So coming up is Slark's first death of the game. Silencer ends up using his silence spell or whatever it's called on him. And he doesn't dark pact it. This is a very common thing that you want to be able to do on Slark and not to get silenced. Now Silencer follows this up with his ultimate and pretty good usage of his global silence there and Slark could have even toggled the strength treads here and he probably would have survived if he toggled the strength treads at the start when he was taking harass he would have got that extra health from like what's it like plus 200 health to switch the strength treads so one thing that you see quite commonly with doing with this Slark is that when he gets neutral items so he's farming a lot of jungle camps he just leaves them on the ground and at this point you really want to pick them up you don't want to leave them he did this various times throughout the game probably like five or six times he just buys an or gets an item off of neutral and just leaves it there on the ground the enemy can easily just come in and take this and uh, you really don't want to do this you want to utilize those backpack slots give them to someone in your team so now he has his shadow blade and silencer is after diving him here again so the same thing has happened last time silencer uses that silence ability and then he uses global silence shadow blade is used to save himself here which preferably he would have used dark pack just to purge it all off and he probably could have even turned it while they thought he was silence and the support was teleporting in very easy could have been a kill there on silencer if he played that a little bit differently it makes the enemy go on you and you can save yourself and here's a scenario where Slark kind of outplays himself, he pounces himself into Bramble Maze, he doesn't dark pack it off, he gets power shot and dies. If he had one there, he would have been able to survive, and there's a lot of other plays in other places that he could have benefited a lot from Wand as well. And, like, obviously he could have walked around Bramble Maze as well, he could have done a lot of things there. And, uh, this Shadow Blade hasn't really availed of him much use yet. He just kind of moves around to wherever he's farming, if there's someone nearby, he'll attack them. And you see this item here is still here 10 minutes later. No one has picked it up. He hasn't pinged it out. And when you ping these items, unfortunately right now, it doesn't um, show it on the minimap. So people don't know exactly where it is. So now PA is after using her BKB there. And Slark does not react to it. He doesn't chase after her. What he should have done was Shadow Blade run after PA and wait till her BKB runs out try and go on her. He also built this Manta style which is kind of to counter global silence I would assume but it's not a very smart idea uh, because you probably want BKB. It gives you damage, the movement speed is not really all that great. If you want to go like Senjin Yasha probably a little bit better than going this but his itemization is very questionable this game as you'll see a little bit later but you see he focuses bristle here now he's running into five heroes he got baited in no one has dust if this was a slightly better players on support they would have very easily killed slack there but now they're using dust <laughs> oh they use dust like five seconds too late maybe one of them had it in their backpack but at this point slack does not really want shouldn't really fight like this he finds silencer out of position here he misses the pounce all he has to do is just walk up to the player and once they're running away, then you pounce. That's such a much better idea. But instead he uses this Shadow Blade to try and escape, which is not really a good idea. 
and he ends up dying here. He also had his ulti ready. He used his Manta too early. When he was going running after Silencer, that was when he used his Manta. He should have been using his Manta to try and dispel the slow from PA's dagger or something like that. So there's no global silence and again Slark is using his pounce to try and start the fight. He dark packs, runs out. And this is just again another case of where he needs to start with just right clicking people rather than using pounce straight away. Even Aghanims would have been a much better item here I feel like. And he does kill Bristle pretty quick now with the Bounty Hunter and aid. And PA has been caught here. Slark is constantly missing her and it also stands the reason that MKB would also be a really good item because there's two heroes with evasion both Wind Ranger and PA so it's there's a lot of different options you have here you even have Silver Edge which would be pretty good against Bristol and PA but he doesn't really opt to go any of these things there's just a ton of different item choices that he could have done better so Slark is pushing high ground here there's no one really responding they killed Invoker on mid lane and he has BKB here he also has dark packed invisibility like at this point he didn't really need to bkb he tries and teleports in front of the enemy if pa was here at this position he could have got abyssal bladed but pa wasn't there so not really the smartest play and it's also a waste of a bkb charge when he could have very easily just dark packed it and shadow blade away when you use dark packed it has a delay over time so the purge comes like a couple of seconds afterwards so you can purge off that potential uh, dust of appearance. And now he finds Dark Willow, he attacks her once and now pounces. That's a lot better to start the fight. He uses his BKB now but Dark Willow has also got BKB. He's zoning in on this Dark Willow who probably has a glimmer cape now. And two can play the invisibility game and Slark gets outplayed. Oh, not great. And with this great fairy fire, he has been using it in fights, which is pretty good. But now he's global silence. He doesn't have Manta because he used it for something else. Probably some stupid interaction. And it's really a poor usage. He's built all defensive items here. His fairy fire, he had Silver Edge ready there and he didn't use it. So, a lot of small things he could have done better with his item usage. And if you see, I see it throughout the whole game that the way that he's using Manta is really terrible. He never uses Manta to farm. He uses it randomly to try and do more damage with the illusions rather than using it for the idea to dispel or disjoint something. So Slark has his ulti, he has BKB, he has Manta, Shadow Blade, Abyssal Blade, and his Dark Pack ready. He has tons of defensive capabilities. So Bristleback is standing here. And now Slark is probably going to click onto Bristle and he pounces over here. This is a case of where directional movement would have been very beneficial because where the barracks is, it makes you walk around the barracks. So in this case now he got rooted, he didn't press his BKB, he didn't press Manta, he didn't use Dark Pact either there. And uh, he pretty much just dies behind the tier 4 and buys back instantly. He teleports in, he's trying to go for another kill and if he dies here it could pretty much be GG. So this is not a really good idea to go try and play aggressive here. You want to definitely play safe, play defensive in this scenario. But the enemy, while Slark is going Roshan, they can easily come in here and kill him inside from Roshan. Not a smart idea at any chance. Like he can pounce out and the enemy can come in snatch the ages. But you see Bristle has gone mid. They're going for the tier 4s. Where is Slark? He's in Roshan. And guess what? He has no teleport. So he has to run all the way back. And meanwhile, he's after losing 2 tier 4s. And have a look at the Ancient here. He doesn't even focus the Ancient. He's not looking at the heroes who are hitting the Ancient. And the Slark can't even kill anyone. And you want to know why he can't kill anyone? Because he doesn't have stacks. He doesn't have any items for doing good damage. And Abyssal Blade is not really that efficient of damage. Meanwhile, his Ancient is dying. And this Roshan was a terrible idea. So based off of that pounds to jump into the tier 4. He ended up losing that game. A really crap buyback and he didn't even defend his own Ancient, the actual name of the game. Now we're looking at an Ancient 1 Slark player and notice how he starts right clicking the enemy and building up stacks. He also has an Orb of Venom, he bought a Quelling Blade on the Courier, he flew it out to him. It came at around 60 seconds or so. And now Witch Doctor gets hooked. So with those Essence Shift stacks here it gives him a somewhat of an advantage going into this. Witch Doctor gets a Cask. Even though he misses the pounce here, he ends up still getting the kill. But that's solely based off of the fact that he was harassing earlier. And he's not just relying on his support to harass. As well as that, when you see when Underlord comes back, you see that he will constantly try and right-click this 
Underlord maybe once or twice just so you can get an essence shift stack and also get the Orb of Venom harass and the Underlord can't really put much pressure into the lane especially seeing as Slack has already got a kill at this point. And you see Underlord comes back into the lane very quickly they go and try and get a kill here and Slark is actively trying to deny the creep so his creep wave doesn't push so hard and he is denying Underlord stuff as well. So this Underlord is not very good, he's constantly letting his creeps get denied and he's kind of underperforming in comparison to what you might see as a normal ancient player. So now Underlord is level 5, Slark is level 6, he pounces Underlord just before the tower and gets the leash in so that he wasn't under the tower aggro and he could ulti there but he knows exactly how far he can go and he ends up surviving through that and he'll go back into the shadows into the fog so that he can heal up a little bit just before he's farming as you see he walks into the trees so for the past few minutes underlord just kind of comes back to the lane every now and again and slark has figured out that underlord is jungling so he goes into the jungle with a clarity he finds the underlord at pretty much half hp here he has two permanent agility already and now he's catching the Underlord. As you see he does the right clicks into Underlord first and then as he's running away he uses the pounce. Rather than before using the pounce first which the Hurl player was making mistakes on constantly throughout the entire game. I don't think he realized at all that you need to get some right clicks in first before the pounce. So at 13 minutes now Slark has his Diffusal Blade. He ends up finding Underlord yet again and he ends up killing him very easily here now as i was saying this underlord is doing pretty bad like it, it isn't much pressure put in the lane the pudge has been roaming for most of the lane and pudge just fed in the lane as well now with the diffusal blade he goes and find more kills now in this scenario you would just push down the enemy safely in tower but slack decides not to do that and he decides to go off farming somewhere and this ends up leaving husker and potentially nature's profit to push this tower but Nature's Prophet goes back to the fountain, Slark is going off back to the jungle to farm like this. Now Husker is left alone here and Pudge comes and Spectre here and Husker ends up dying and this tower gets denied. This is something that you really don't want to do, you really want to stick with your team to push this down this tower. Mainly for the reason that you can take over the enemy jungle, especially against Spectre you don't want to let this tower survive so easily and uh, Slark meanwhile is down here just farming and it's kind of like you're trading creeps off for something that you could put pressure on the map and put the enemy carry even further behind. So now Slark has hit level 12, he goes in here, he's pinging out a ward where up on the cliff and he walks up the hill here. He finds three heroes and decides to pounce in with Dark Pact, he ulties and this is where he's really playing the game like a team deathmatch. He's pretty much caught between four heroes now and he ends up dying. Now Axe goes in and they're fighting in a really stupid position with Slark's pretty much terrible initiation there and they get pretty much team wiped and if we have a look at the XP graph you end up seeing that the XP has dipped in the complete opposite direction. All of the lead that they've been building up to this point has pretty much just been lost in one fight and the gold is kind of like a slight lead still and the win probability is as hop back to the dire side instead. So a really big mistake there that seems pretty small but in overall the ability to continuously keep snowballing it really hurts the Slark and his team in that scenario. The Slark is now pressuring the enemy jungle and they're putting boards into the enemy jungle as well. And in this place he is getting a lot of stats here but Dazzle is here to save him. Now Slark has wasted his pounce and he ends up getting caught and dies yet again playing this game kind of like a team death match and kind of underestimating how far he can go with this hero. So the enemy is after showing three heroes on bottom and they're pushing down the tier 1 safe lane tower. No one's really defending it. It's often just left for the enemy. So at this point now Slark is still just jungling. He's moving around. Now Pudge is coming to the vision on his mini map but he never really noticed it. And now Pudge comes up and walks up to him. Now if we have a quick look at the mini map you can see Dazzle making his way up towards Pudge. At this point you really want to back out. The Slark was not really paying attention to this and he also committed his pounce which was pretty much totally unnecessary especially when he has this clumsy net and if Dazzle was smart there he would have thrown down his uh, shallow grave onto Pudge and Pudge wouldn't have even died. So Slark died for this. He buy rage buys back. So this is 
really detrimental overall and the enemy team ends up pushing down the tier 2 tower as well with no defense either. So now we're going to see Axe Blink calling in and this is an example of a much better initiation and how it can impact the fight. Now even though he didn't get any prime targets like Dazzle, he did get some creeps there and he didn't get any spins. It did get the Visage to commit a further position forward and Dazzle ends up not getting focused here and instead they go on Visage first. Ideally Slack wants to be going into the back line and going for Dazzle first but this does end up resulting in 3 kills and 0 deaths for his team. So this is a really good example of a better initiation and the Slack can't just randomly pounce in onto 3 or 4 heroes it really turns the game around the opposite way as we've been seeing with the gold and experience graph. So Slack is after going into the back line there's a fight kind of breaking out here and he goes on to Visage first. Probably one of the harder targets to kill. And Dazzle even gets the Shallow Grave off. He's still chasing here. He has no ultimate now. He's getting cut out. He ends up Dark Pacting Pudge ult. And he still he kills Pudge. And he doesn't kill Visage again. And the second Shallow Grave. So really this is an example where the focus of your target needs to be on Dazzle. Yet again he's making this mistake. So now Spectre is here on his own and Underlord is teleporting into the outpost and Slark is stuck in the trees, Spectre is also stuck in a sprout now and Underlord dies and pretty much they're catching the enemy one by one here, Dazzle is caught and see when the Dazzle is out of the fight, they end up killing Spectre so easily and every other hero is getting caught here. This is terrible positioning from the enemy team on the dire side and the Radiant is punishing that incredibly well. And by doing this, they push down this tier 2 tower. Husker takes Roshan. At this point, if this was a normal match in Ancient, you would expect this to be GG for the Radiant side. They've won this game. Again, Visage getting caught here. So this is really, really bad for Dire side. And this is where you want to capitalize as much as possible. And as we end up seeing here, the Husker ends up diving and stuff. And the Slark doesn't overcommit. He has bought Satanic at this point. And this satanic becomes quite important as you'll see here. After taking the tier 3 in the barracks, one the ranged racks only, the witch hacker gets hooked. But Slark goes for the shrine. And off this again, he's committing too far trying to get a kill on one hero. And it's not even a hero that he can easily kill. The satanic was never used. And even bigger off of this, he doesn't have buyback. And this is why I wanted to say the satanic is so important is because it never gets used and he doesn't have buyback as a result. The Spectre goes mid with his team and Slark has no buyback. The Husker goes in and fight yet again without the Slark as it seems that like no one really wants the teamwork here and Slark is now left on his own with Axe and no other heroes have buyback other than Witch Doctor who doesn't have ult. Slark gets silenced here, he uses his Satanic while he's silenced. He doesn't even attack anyone with the Satanic and he ends up dying here with no buyback for 80 seconds and this ends up being game. They just go tier 4s and finish it. So this is just really good example of where you can start your snowball and lose it all. He rage buybacks, he focuses the wrong targets and he doesn't play with his team and also his team is not really coordinating perfectly with him either. There's just a very big disconnect between a lot of the players in this match very easily and very winnable. So now we're looking at an immortal rank 220 Slark. He's just after getting the courier which gave him boots of speed. Meanwhile Vengeful Spirit is pulling the creep wave. Sometimes people make the mistake to go and play aggressive when the creep wave is pushing in and their own creeps are being pulled. That way you would be aggroing lots of creeps. With this ring of protection it gives him a little bit more armor to deal with the creep but he doesn't really want to play aggressive like that. Now in this scenario the witch doctor gets caught here. He now has minus one armor from the venge armor reduction spell or W and Slark can very easily pick up this kill here. Even though he takes harass back this is first blood. It's worth a lot more than the two creeps that he could have potentially missed in lane but luckily because the aggro came after Slark he didn't end up missing those creeps because they aggroed after venge there. I think he might have missed one but pretty small. And like getting first blood there is a lot more valuable than even losing two last hits. So now they're going playing aggressive here and they find doom under the tower. The witch doctor was rotating somewhere else and now he comes back to this lane with a teleport. 
they decided not to go under the tower, which is a pretty smart decision to play off of that. Just getting their harass into doom is pretty good in this rotation. And off a result of this, they end up catching Witch Doctor here yet again. Now, if we have a look at what Vintage is doing, Vintage is rotating around here. She puts an Observer Ward up on the cliff here. Now, Slark knows about this happening and they're able to now see Witch Doctor under the tower. Yet another easy kill. All you have to do is close in on him. And with his ultimate, he could very easily dive even further than that if Doom was in position. Something that the Ancient player didn't do was fly out the courier straight away to give him this Blade of Alacrity. It's something that's pretty small. He also has a Royal Jelly stack, which makes it a little bit easier for him to sustain Slark's mana while killing creep camps later on. As we'll see, he farms a lot of the jungle, and while he's farming, watch his treads. He'll toggle to int treads, then use dark pack, then toggle to strength treads while taking the damage from dark pack, and then switch back to agility when he's going attacking them. Now at this point he feels that he just doesn't want to miss out on the last hits in lane. Actually he's going for the runes and the outpost, which is more important than getting a double stack. It's really important to know what your priorities should be. So now that Doom is level 9, He's getting a lot of farm in the jungle and he's pretty much pressuring aggressive here as well and Devenge ends up swapping him here and there's something that's like kind of impressive that you wouldn't see in ancient players doing but when we have the doom animation coming in there Slark uses the shadow dance to dodge the doom so he waits and times his shadow dance perfectly straight after the stun ends he uses shadow dance anticipating that doom is going to use his doom you can also react to it because the cast time of Doom is pretty long and in this scenario, regardless of whether the Doom got hit or not, Slark did end up dying. He did try to toggle the strength treads, he did use his wand charges. So for the past 3 minutes or so, Slark just goes into the jungle and he's constantly farming camps with his dark pact over and over again. He used a couple of clarities and he's very easily able to sustain his mana with the royal jelly consumable which is kind of unlike some of the other matches. Now they end up going for a smoke here and this is a really good example of teamwork and team coordination. This is nothing like what we saw in the other matches, uh, in especially Ancient. This is definitely something that divides the players from low Ancient to anywhere higher. And you have Shadowfiend goes in first, Slark doesn't break the smoke until the fear comes into place. And now you end up seeing the TP rotations are about to come in. So they're scattering, get out boys, we gotta go. Now Doom comes in. He's a blink dagger. You see the animation of Doom came in there. His ultimate, he pounced to get out of the cast range. Now Doom is coming again with the animation and he shadow dances. Incredibly good timing here to get out from this. And they do get leashed here, but now Doom has already expended his blink. He dark packs, dodges the stun from Puck. And he also dodges the stun from Treant's Altered Root. So those are incredibly well-timed spells. In the last replay, what we end up seeing was Slark sucked at focusing the correct targets. In this scenario, Slark ends up focusing the Witch Doctor first, instead of going on the Troll Warlord. Mainly because of the fact that once you can take out one hero very easily, not only do you build up Essence Shift stacks, but that hero is out of it for the entire fight. Then he goes on Doom, he also has his ulti still ready here. But he doesn't need it, he uses his one charges and now he gets out from the leash, he's going after Puck, trying to cancel Puck's blink dagger, but Puck can still blink here and end up catching Puck. So that was a really good fight, he didn't even have to commit his shadow dance if he needed to continue fighting afterwards. So he could have kept fighting for like another 30 or 60 seconds, no problem, if Saka really wanted to. And those really really long fights benefit Slark massively because of the etching essence shift stacks that you get off of it so the troll is kind of out of position here and the puck as well and the doom is after dying he just bought back so they have this really poorly coordinated fight in the radiant and it's up to the dire side to punish it which is slark's team the slark is zoning the puck out of the fight and slark gets doomed here by the doom but very easily for slark he can just go into the shadows and regen his health back up now as you see he's chasing the puck and this is zoning the puck out of the fight and makes puck kind of like a, a very small factor here. Now he almost dies here to the troll warlord and uh, he got very lucky here just to be able to survive that. He does life steal back up off of the vampiric fangs and he also has his BKB. 
with those one charges it makes it a little bit easier to have that like fast health regen and he is building up tons of stacks because of these fights the longer they draw out this is a very high value item on slack even though it didn't come out with a huge avail in this game it's a really cheap item for how much value it can turn back because if it's the difference between you getting one or two extra kills or not dying once or twice it very easily pays back for itself so off of that poorly coordinated team fight from the Radiant side, they use the Essence Shift stacks on Slark to go and push. They take a tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 and they also take Barracks. Doom doesn't have buyback, he just used it, he has a long death timer as well and they have no way to fight or respond to this. So taking as much advantage as possible, Slark also just after picking up his Aghanims here now and it's what allows him to pretty much survive and tank some of the spells here. Puck is committed to her ulti. Doom is like blinked forward as well so they're committing really hard now at this point Slark pounces away before he gets doomed by Doom and Doom is like he's trying to get the Doom first maybe but Doom does have BKB now he gets hit by Doom's ulti and he's muted but you can very easily just run into the trees here I think he even got Glimmer Cape by the vengeful spirit and when you get glimmer cape it doesn't stop the damage from doom but he does get the health regen from his ultimate so really in this fight all slark had to do was tank a few spells and make the enemy move out of position it was really straightforward and this agonims ended up allowing them to do that very easily so now really slark is just running around getting as many kills as he can and he's picking off the enemy pretty much one by one here and it's pretty much a joke and every time he does this he's building up more and more essence shift stack he had like 50 there and now it's just like a matter of just finishing out the game he can just run around and kill each one of them and i think the enemy team has pretty much given up at this point because the network difference is so high and the experience difference is probably even the biggest factor of all this and this is something that you see a lot in this patch where the team that gets really far ahead in levels it's pretty much like not impossible but it's incredibly difficult to compete against it so if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more dota content like this make sure you subscribe